original idea for this video was to show a digital painting in high speed, talk about the Wacom Cintiq 16 display on which I'm painting, and perhaps inspire you to create your own artwork. That was the plan, and I was pleased with the painting when it was done. For about 10 minutes. I've been a professional cartoonist and digital painter for about 20 years. My first tablet, bought in the late 90s, was a 4x5 first generation Intuos. It was pretty small, but that little digital tablet changed the way that art was made. Back then, if you told people you were a digital artist, most people assumed, and would often tell you to your face, oh, the computer draws it. Thankfully, most now realize that just like oils, acrylics, and watercolors, digital tools are just that, tools to bring an artist's vision to life. When it comes to digital tools, Wacom not only wrote the book, it invented the press on which it was printed. True, I have an iPad as well. I sketch and draw on it, and even used it to display my reference while working on this painting. But when it comes to finished work, it's always done on a Wacom display. Beginning a painting is frustrating because it starts out rough and your mind's eye wants to see the finished piece, so for a long time, it just sucks. That's a lot like art skills in general. You've got to suck for a while before you get good, and even then you'll rarely be satisfied. It's a lonely life sometimes, just you and the creation, and if you don't get comfortable with that process, that time alone where nobody is watching, all the likes and shares won't make up for it. My own work has been called realistic, but cartoony, whimsical, caricature, and other descriptions that pretty much mean the same thing. I just call them funny looking animals. I'm not painting them as they are, but as I see them. They end up with personality, expression, grins, or sly looks, and while you're unlikely to see them in a book of taxonomy reference, they're popular with my audience. My work is licensed through a number of companies that wholesale them to retailers. I also supply prints to zoos and wildlife parks, and I'm continually navigating the ongoing internal debate regarding animals in captivity and how it aids or hinders conservation. I support wildlife organizations that rescue, rehabilitate, and release injured or orphaned animals, as well as facilities that adopt the ones who can't go back to the wild. I do my best to make sure that my art and my ideals get along. This is where my white tiger painting went off the rails. When it was done, one of my largest clients told me she doesn't stock any merchandise with white tiger imagery on it and included a link for explanation. What causes the color in a white tiger is a double recessive gene, and the only way to continue to create white tigers is by inbreeding close family members. That gene also creates crossed eyes, clubbed feet, cleft palates, spinal deformities, and defective organs. Reputable zoos and wildlife facilities that continue to breed white tigers are going against their mandate to support conservation because white tigers aren't supposed to exist. They've been bred because people like them. When I found out the truth about white tigers, I experienced a mix of emotions. First, I was appalled at the practice. Then, most selfishly, I thought, what a waste of my time. Why couldn't I have found out about this before I spent hours on this painting? I can't in good conscience sell this piece. Here's the irony. The reference I used for this painting wasn't even a white tiger. It was an Amur tiger with traditional orange, black, and white coloring from a photo I took myself at a wildlife facility that rescues orphaned animals. I painted it white to do something different. You've got to walk your talk, and knowing what I now know, licensing this piece would be hypocritical. Thought this was finished? So did I. But I'm going to keep painting, and I'll explain. After taking a day to let this settle in, my wife Shauna offered something I hadn't considered. She's not an artist, but has a good eye for it, and has often suggested changes to a painting that made the image better. The suggestion was to turn the image into a traditional tiger painting, in my style, of course. The reference wasn't a white tiger, so why not just paint it like the reference? That's a relatively easy thing to do using digital tools and software. By dropping the saturation of the painting to make it almost grayscale, adding layers on top with a color blend mode, using various masking techniques, painting in shading and contrast on more layers, I was able to hold true to my ethics and salvage all of that work. It meant a couple more hours on the piece, but it was worth it. I kept the blue eyes in the background because I liked how that looked against the orange fur. My art style allows these sorts of liberties. From the technical side, this video is a demonstration of the painting techniques I use for all of my work. And the fact that I was able to paint this finished, detailed piece on the Wacom Cintiq 16 without compromise. It's an impressive piece of hardware, and I really enjoyed putting it through its paces. On the art side, it's important to note that even if I hadn't been able to edit this painting to create a result I could live with, and couldn't sell prints and products of this piece, it still wouldn't have been wasted time. No time spent making art is wasted. It's practice, and with each hour spent on that, you can't help but be better on the next piece. Whether it's new techniques, new tools, new software, or new perspectives, art is a long game. It takes years to become good at it, and you'll never be finished learning. Ironic that I began this recording as a teacher, but once again ended up as a student. 
go create something. <laughs>